Good Monday morning. Roger Williams with a look at WHRV News. Southeast Virginia currently experiences the fastest rate of sea level rise on the Atlantic coast. That's only projected to accelerate over the next several decades to the point where neighborhoods could be lost to flooding. Today, we begin a series called At a Crossroads, part of the Pulitzer Center's Connected Coastline Reporting Initiative. Common response to the rising waters around here has been elevate homes, install flood pumps, heighten seawalls, but in some cases, cities are already telling the sea, hey, you can have this land. WHRB Sam Turkin reports on what that looks like and why it's difficult. There is something unique about the Fernwood Farms neighborhood in Chesapeake. Most of the suburban area is like any other, dozens of street line homes neatly next to each other. But the Elizabeth River runs along part of the neighborhood get closer to the water, and suddenly the area looks gap-toothed with several empty lots. So this is one. Property number two is here, right in between two homes. Welcome to Ground Zero in Chesapeake's quest to retreat from flood-prone land. Rob Braidwood's our tour guide today. He's the city's emergency services coordinator. This is four. Five, six. Yeah. Once homes, they're now grassy fields. Some have signs along the street. No dumping, keep Chesapeake beautiful. This area used to be a swamp before the city developed it in the 1960s. Now, the water is taking it back. King tides a few times a year can turn streets into lakes. Bring in a hurricane or nor'easter, living rooms become swimming pools. You can feel how wet this ground is underfoot? Yeah, and it's not like it's really rained in no, the No, it hasn't rained for a couple days. Braidwood says Chesapeake's been buying out homes around here since 2005, all voluntary. Here's how it works. The city goes to someone whose house floods and says, Hey, you keep paying for expensive repairs and the government's helping because you have federal flood insurance. What if we buy your home for fair market value? Tear this building down, no one ever builds here again. Convert it to green space. It's a win-win, saving you money. So I would love to buy every house that floods. Let's use this and see if we can reduce the risk of the entire community. Citywide, Chesapeake has done it over 40 times with more planned. Braidwood says people usually take the deal when they're sick of the flooding and fear sea level rise. Hi. Come on in. Hello. Like the Creekmers. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? <laughs> Gloria and John Creekmer, their daughter Kim, and Precious, this fluffy Pomeranian mix, they've lived in this two bedroom condo in Chesapeake for the last five years. It's cozy velvet furniture, paintings of flowers, some potted plants out front. But it's not where they thought they'd be. You see, back in the 60s, John and Gloria built themselves a red brick ranch style home in Fernwood Farms with big windows, a huge yard. It was like we had birthed a baby before we had children. We were very prideful about our home. But it was near the Elizabeth River and started flooding a lot. They'd repair, then there'd be another flood over and over again. It ultimately added up to hundreds of thousands of dollars in damages. Kim says Hurricane Isabel in 2003 was especially bad. There were fish and crabs from the river in our house. I just she fell in a chair and cried. When Rob Braidwood came around several years ago, they couldn't turn down his offer. They sold. Kim pulls out her iPhone and plays a video of the excavator demolishing the house. So I feel a little sadness, but can't live in the past. Still, I keep the memories, the sweet memories of a beginning of a dream, a dream home, our first home. These decisions, retreating from flood-prone land, they've happened tens of thousands of times nationwide in recent decades. New York after Superstorm Sandy, Charlotte, Houston. It's up to the city or state to offer buyouts. The federal government can help fund them. In coastal Virginia, this has traction. Newport News has acquired nearly 80 properties, the most in the state. Virginia Beach and Norfolk have been slower to embrace it, opting instead to elevate vulnerable homes. But now they're planning for more buyouts, a key step, according to climate adaptation experts. Would you call yourself like a managed retreat cheerleader? <laughs> Could I go with advocate? <laughs> I've never been a big cheerleader. A.R. Siders is a professor at the University of Delaware's Disaster Research Center. She says, look, in some areas, other resilience efforts, like higher seawalls, could work. But in the most at-risk neighborhoods, it's futile. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration forecasts sea levels could rise another seven feet this century, around coastal Virginia. 
So why spend money on defenses over and over again if the property will inevitably go underwater and become worthless? For every dollar we spend on managed retreat, the estimates are that you save four to eight dollars. So that's a pretty incredible return on investment financially in terms of avoiding those losses. Cider says that money can instead go to developing new safer communities, maybe inland. Still, there are several barriers to buyouts. Your house likely has to have flooded in the past, funding is limited, and it can take years to deal with government bureaucracy, a complicated process. So a number of programs describe people who are initially interested in the buyout, but then they stop being interested six months later. There's also politics. Some places don't want to do it. Gloucester County used to buy out homes, 29 actually. Then some new members took over the Board of Supervisors and ended the program in 2018. Philip Bazzani led the revolt. We don't want to get involved in any kind of real estate ownership. We don't want to do that. I'm a conservative libertarian, so I want the government to just leave me alone. The other challenge is remember, this is voluntary. And that makes things really tricky in a region where folks enjoy fishing and kayaking from their backyards. Take Addie Red. What is the flooding in your yard like? Sometimes if there's high tide and a lot of rain, it'll come up to about here. So this is like half of your backyard? Yeah, mm-hmm. Red and her husband have been here on the Elizabeth River in Norfolk's Ingleside neighborhood for about two decades. A few years after buying their house, a bad flood inundated the crawl space, destroying their floor. 30,000 bucks in damage, a lot of which was covered by flood insurance. Then a second flood ruined her washing machine and dryer another couple thousand dollars. Now, projections show her house underwater by 2060. And yet, she has no plans to say goodbye. Any water you move to in the area is gonna be the same thing at some point, right? Well, what if you just don't live right on the water? We wanna live right on the water. <laughs> I know, but this is a coastal region. There's water everywhere. What's a 15 minute drive to the water? No. Mm -mm. Climate adaptation experts say many properties don't need a buyout immediately. But it's critical that governments at least have a plan for what to do with them. Because if not, someone will eventually end up stuck with a home that's worthless. Sam Turkin, WHRV News.